Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Home AC virtual open event. Uh, this afternoon, in this session, we're going to be talking about Farry, uh, both the apprenticeship and the Farry access course uh, that are on offer at the Home AC campus. We've got a little video just to play you, which will introduce the course, and then the tutors are on hand to answer any questions you may have. Hello. May I extend a warm welcome to Herefordshire and Ludlow College? My name is Alison Moon, and I am the assistant principal responsible for the Home Lacey campus. Welcome to the Faculty of Lambert Studies. This morning you will be greeted by the head of campus and the various Lambert course leaders. The courses we offer cover blacksmithing, farrowry, welding, general land-based, animal care, equine, agriculture and forestry. We offer you the opportunity to study any one of these full-time courses along with a tutorial program to support your needs and the opportunity to reset GCSE Maths and English. Before we move on, I just want to tell you some of the reasons you may wish to study with us. We have an Ofsted pass rate of 93%. We have excellent physical resources. We offer a friendly, safe, an open environment. We have lecturers with real world experience. And in addition to that, we have students who have said that 93% are making good progress. 94% say they enjoy their lessons. 97% say teachers encourage them to work hard and behave well. 95% say they receive good support from their teachers. 97% say they know how they are expected to behave and 92% say they would recommend the college to a friend. So collect your questions and sit back as we welcome you to see what we have on offer in our dynamic faculty. If Farrier is your thing, then uh, Home Lacey could be the place for you to study. We're one of only three colleges around the country who offer the Farrier Apprenticeship Programme. This is a, a long course, it's four year apprenticeship uh, and requires a lot of hard work to get through that program uh, to become a professional farrier at the end. Uh, you'll require four, five GCSEs at grade four in order to enter the program, including English, maths and the science. Um, the course is delivered in blocks, so you'll have two blocks per year. Those range between three weeks and two weeks uh, over the entire program. And at the end of the course, you will have an assessment, an endpoint assessment, which is based around an oral exam, a written exam, and a practical shoeing operation. At the end of this, uh, you will get your diploma uh, awarded by the Worshipful Company of Farriers. A dedicated staff uh, will help guide you through the, through the programme, and uh, you will need to get yourself an approved training farrier, or ATF. Uh, who will also be your employer through the four-year program. Um, very rewarding, very hard work, but at the end of it, a very rewarding career. Come and talk to us more if you wish to discuss the Farry Apprenticeship Program. Okay, so hopefully that's given you a bit of insight into the Farry Apprenticeship. Uh, just to talk about the Farry Access Program, uh, we've got Erin, who is one of the tutors involved in that. Hi there. Yeah. So just first of all, to talk about the Foundation to Farry, or we run a farrier access route. Um, this is a course that you can typically take prior to going on to your farrier apprenticeship. Um, it forms various parts. The first part um, included in this one year programme, which is typically about three days a week, is an extended certificate in horse care. This is where you can come in um, perhaps with um, no or very little knowledge of horses um, and take equine subjects such as um, horse biology, where you'll learn an introduction into um, the structure of the horse, its function. Um, we do the cardiovascular, the respiratory, and just to generally know your way around the horse's skeletal structure. Um, we also do um, horse health and horse handling and some horse behaviour, just to obviously familiarise yourself um, with the horse and things that obviously when you go into the world of farrowry you need to be aware of um, handling techniques and the horse's behaviours. 
Also, as part of this foundation to Farrery, you will take um, a program called the Certificate in Forge Work. Um, there's a, a bit involved in this, and of course, you can obviously contact us as tutors at any time to go into more detail than, than perhaps you'll get you'll get today. Um, but briefly, um, the Certificate in Forge Work forms an online test which is to do with the theory of forge work and then with an external live exam um, on some board pieces. So some metalwork pieces that you will create with us at home later throughout the duration of your one year program. Um, we also encourage students as part of the course to go on trials and this means on trials with um, um, potential accredited training farriers or the ATFs that may well um, take you on for the length of your apprenticeship and will support you in tutorials um, and one-to-one -one, um, sessions um, to help you um, build contacts with these um, accredited training farriers through CV writing, cover letters um, and generally how to um, yeah, form uh, contacts with these people. Um, so as I said, it's three days a week, a one year program. Um, isn't necessarily a prerequisite to go on to the um, apprenticeship, but certainly what we're finding is very appealing to the ATFs or the farriers that may well take you on because it shows that you've got a prior interest, you've done a year's program, you've um, learnt some skills to do with horse handling, you're safe and, and competent around horses. Um, and really um, shows that you can also um, work with the meta work, uh, various processes in that you learn throughout your certificate in forge work. But any any further questions after this, obviously you can certainly talk to my name's Erin Parry, your tutors, um, and we can discuss further again. Thanks, Erin. That was great. Um, we've had a few questions come in about the access course, actually. Um, yeah. I mean, some of them you, you, you've answered in what you've said. Uh, someone's asked how long it is. Obviously, you said it was a year, um, and that it's not a not a prerequisite to do the apprenticeship. But someone's asked, does it give you direct access to the apprenticeship? Or... Okay, so great question. Um, um, yeah, basically, it's not um, necessarily um, prerequisite to going on to it. So you don't necessarily need it, but it's very, very um, favoured then by majority of, of ATFs to have that. Um, so it's not necessarily a prerequisite to get on. Was that the question to answer the question, David? Um, I, I think what, what they're asking is if if you do the access course, is that sort of like a, almost like a guarantee? Okay. Your apprenticeship. Regarding um, the GCSEs, I, I didn't really touch on that previously. So I'll just mention that now. To get onto the farrier access, typically you'd need a minimum of four GCSEs at C or four or above to include English, maths, and science. But then to get on to the apprenticeship, as I'm sure um, Dean will come in and discuss this a bit further later on, to get onto the apprenticeship from the Foundation to Farrow, you would need five C or four uh, above in English, maths and science. So certainly you would need to, to have those GCSEs in place to progress onto the apprenticeship. OK, brilliant. Thank you. Um, Dean, if I bring you in then just to talk about um, the main apprenticeship then. Um, one of the first questions we've got um, is just what job would I be able to get after finishing the course and is there a lot of demand for it? Oh, uh, your microphone's just muted there, Dean. Well, when, you, when you qualify as a uh, farrier, um, yeah, you, you're qualified as a professional Farrier, you are on the uh, approved um, list of uh, farriers, a registration of farriers, and it means that legally you can go out there and perform the farrier act, which is to um, shoe horses uh, and trim horses. Um, so, so that's what you're qualified to do. Um, is there a lot of demand for it? Um, there is. Uh, there is demand both in the UK and overseas for um, UK trained farriers because we are the only country uh, in the world that has a registration um, program and as a result our um, training is considered widely around the world to be um, the best in the world so if you're wanting to go and work overseas in uh, New Zealand, Canada, Australia, South Africa, um, Europe Scandinavia, 
um, our qualification is widely recognized to be the best in the world. Wow, great. Um, someone's asked um, what transferable skills would I learn on the course? Um, in terms of transferable skills, you would learn um, about communication. So within the Far East standard, um, there are a number of transferable skills and professional behaviours um, that you'll develop. Um, yes, communication is one, so you can use that to take across to um, other professions or industry. Um, professional learning behaviours, so self-development, reflective practice, adaptability, resilience, all of these things you'll learn on the course. Um, and then in terms of practical skills, you'll learn about um, horse handling, you will learn about um, um, blacksmithing um, and also you'll learn about um, anatomy. So, you know, there's lots of kind of transferable skills. I would say, however, that generally when um, people join the course, it's because they have a real desire to um, become a qualified um, farrier. And um, it's generally not the case that they're looking to transfer out of the industry. Um, one of the great things about being a farrier is that you can very much make um, your work in life um, reflect your own interests and um, I suppose particular needs. And an example of that, you know, might be myself. Um, my particular interest is welfare and education. And so through my own farrier profession, um, I've spent a lot of time um, traveling overseas in Central America, South Africa, um, Eastern Europe, supporting equine welfare and training farriers in those countries. Brilliant, thank you. Um, another question here, um, someone's asked how much practical is there? So what's the balance between practical and theory? Apprenticeship? <coughs> yeah, with, within the apprenticeship as a whole, um, the um, emphasis very much is upon practical because the majority of your time you will spend in the workplace developing those practical skills in for which you uh, you know you need to develop in order to become a qualified farrier um, however when you get into college the um, the mix is very much 50 50 and we tend to run the theory sessions in the morning and the practical sessions in the afternoon but you know farrier is a practical craft it is an art form um, requiring underpinning knowledge but first and foremost it is a craft that um, requiring you to have you know significant kind of motor skills and the ability to learn and reproduce processes to a high quality great thank you um someone's asked what have past students gone on to do after the course i mean do they tend to stay on with the person that's took them on to train or do they go out on their own to do their business or yeah so things have very much um, evolved i suppose in the last kind of um, 10 years um it used to be the case that um uh, newly qualified farriers would tend to go out on their own but i think there's a growing interest in farriers working together in teams and a larger number of apprentices do stay on with either their atf or go on to work for another um, farrier and, and start a business with them because there's you know there's certain benefits in doing that um so so yes yeah, some some apprentices uh, so sorry some newly qualified farriers will go out on their own others will join um, larger groups and as i say you know increasingly there are um farriers going overseas because the uh, the prospects overseas are are also very enticing Okay, great, thank you. Um, a couple of questions about both the facilities and the classes. Basically, someone wants to know um, how large are the, the facilities up campus and how big are the classes typically? Yeah, so <clears throat> we've got um, we've got 18 forges within the Farry Forge. Um, so there's, there's more than enough forges to um, cope with our class sizes. We also have um, a bespoke shoeing bay um, where we can get, you know, comfortably half a dozen horses in. Um, so the, the, the facilities to deliver the practical side are, um, are excellent. And again, you know, Herefordshire School of Farrier is considered to be one of the, you know, leading um, farrier training centres in the world. 
and um, in terms of classroom facilities there are a number of classroom facilities on the campus we have our own um, classroom that we um, generally use however we've got access to other classrooms um, in order to um, you know if we, if we need to to kind of maybe access different um, classroom environments and then I suppose the third element um, and where we're again we're very lucky at Herefordshire um, School of Ferry is that we have an equine yard on site at home Lacey and that gives us direct access to horses so we are able to um, teach the theory um, and also the practical elements using the horses at home Lacey and um, and this can be really helpful because we can use the horses to support um, a real practical understanding of of the anatomy of the lower limb and the pathologies involved um, uh, that you know that we need to understand as farriers. Okay great thank you. I, I, ima I imagine the horses are probably the most reshoed horses in, in the county. <laughs> in that well case. we we have a we have a, um, a broad pool of horses that we pull upon so we have a number of riding schools in the area that bring horses in for us um, so I mean there's there's never a, um, a lack of horses available for us to um, practice on um, but those horses at college mean that say for instance in a in a morning session a theory session where we're looking at a piece of anatomy we can introduce that topic within the classroom maybe show um, some slides some diagrams and um, some pictures but then go out into the equine yard and directly look at that anatomy on the horse feel it palpate it really get used to um, what it does and where it is and, and that gives us um, a much more profound understanding of that anatomy. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's great. Um, someone's asked um, what things will be covered in the course. Um, I'm assuming they're talking about the apprenticeship there. So what are the different sort of topics covered? OK, so <clears throat> um, there's three elements to the, um, the new um, Fari Apprenticeship Standard. Um, including knowledge, skills and behaviours. So the, the knowledge that you have to develop is um, knowledge about the anatomy of the um, lower limb and the pathologies um, that um, affect the lower limb, um, along with some further kind of knowledge in relation to health and safety, um, understanding and handling horses, and also um, um, uh, kind of uh, safe working practices, things like that. So more kind of like foundation kind of knowledge. In terms of skills, you're going to learn how to um, assess horses, how to um, trim feet, how to make horseshoes, uh, how to apply those horseshoes in a way that supports the welfare and the health of that horse. And then in terms of professional behaviours, you are going to learn how to um, reflect upon your own um, development needs, come up with your own um, development plan, so your own CPD kind of plan, um, and demonstrate that you can adapt to different situations and um, um, show kind of resilience um, within the learning environment. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Erin, possibly a question for you here. Um, someone's asked, is there a way I can get onto a ferry access course without GCSEs? I have one C and five D, uh, but also BTEC level three and a legal secretary's diploma. OK, so our entry grades into the ferry access um, do state uh, on the website, so if you want to take a look, but it's typically a minimum of four GCSEs, uh, grade four or above. Now, Science is a very important one because, of course, we're looking at a foundation to ferry about an eventual progression onto the apprenticeship. So obviously the more GCSEs whereby you need those five to include English, Maths and Science to progress to the apprenticeship, obviously the better um, for you. Regarding the English and Maths, if you do come into us and we can discuss this on a one to one um, scenario um, with um, perhaps a, a D in English or Maths, then we do offer um, tuition and classes um, 
in English and maths with English and maths um, specific tutors to try and help you to achieve those as part of your programme if required. So I would say, you know, certainly we can discuss it again with tutors uh, on individual. We have our our typical grades to get in, but certainly if there is D's in uh, an English or maths, then um, we could look at maybe doing those at college um, with us. <laughs> From experience, if um, the grades are too low, then the the jump up to the apprenticeship to achieve those and attain those um, five GCs is quite a big step, um, quite daunting for the learner with all the academic side that comes even into the foundation of Farrery. Um, but if there's an English or maths that needs an upgrade um, with us, then then that is has proven to be attainable with us whilst on programme. OK, brilliant. Thanks, Ed. Mm -hmm. um, Dean, if I bring you back, um, mm -hmm. just thinking other things you might want to talk about in regards to Farry. Um, obviously, yeah. there was the uh, Master Farry competition um, a few months back. Yes. Is that sort of like a, a regular thing that happens, competitions in, in Farry? Yeah, so um, we've, we've restarted the Master and um, Apprentice um, competition. Um, competitions are a big um, part of um, the Ferrari industry, the Ferrari profession, um, and they're particularly helpful for apprentices because they help you to develop um, industry speed within your work. Um, and working at an industry speed is important because it supports the welfare of horses. And um, we can't have a situation where people spend half a day shoeing a horse. It's got to be shod within um, a reasonable time scale because you know these are horses uh, these are animals that you know like to move around um, and uh, you know need to carry on eating they they trickle feed throughout the day and um, so working at industry speed is important and and we run I started running this competition again to help our apprentices to, apprentices to develop that industry speed okay great thank you um is there anything else you wanted to add about the apprenticeship at all that maybe hasn't been mentioned? Yeah, I mean, I think just to re-emphasise what David was saying, the um, the course um, that we offer um, is a, I suppose, a partnership between ourselves and the college and an approved training farrier who will employ you as an, as an apprentice and also um, train you for the duration of the, the four year apprenticeship. Um, so if you want to become um, an apprentice, um, it's um, it, it's a requirement that you find yourself an approved training farrier to take you on, employ you and agree to um, train you for the duration of the apprenticeship. And, and this is why um, we also run the pre farrier course the you know the Farrery Foundation course because that gives you a a set of foundation skills within um, Farrier within the um, uh, within your development to become a professional Farrier that makes you more appealing um, to approved training Farriers it's incredibly competitive out there there aren't that many approved training Farriers there are a lot of uh, young people um, out there that want to become professional farriers and so the competition for space and um, places with approved training farriers is it, you know it's very very um it's very very competitive so anything that you can do to give yourself an edge um is going to be beneficial in your um application towards approved training farriers for an apprenticeship so coming on our course will give you foundation skills in um understanding and handling horses it will give you foundation skills uh, in blacksmithing and it will get you into that fiery mentality and it will make you a lot more employable so i would strongly recommend that you join erin um, and um, engage in our um, pre fiery fiery foundation course before you become um, or apply to become a, an apprentice fiery okay brilliant thanks Dean. no worries um, doesn't look like we've got any other questions at the moment, um, so I'll just give it a few minutes just in case anyone's 
got any follow-up questions to that. Okay. Um, uh, this session is being recorded, so um, it'll be up on YouTube for you to re-watch if you want to watch it again. Um, and if, likewise, if you're watching the recording and think that a question hasn't been asked that you want to know the answer to, you're able to send us a message on the website. Uh, you can contact us directly on the YouTube channel, leave a comment, or um, on any of our other social media networks, and we can direct your questions to either Dean or Aaron or, or whoever it is that you need to get into contact with, um, and we'll happily help you out. Um, there's no further questions are coming through. So I think mm -hmm. we'll draw the session to an end there. Okay, um, thank you very much. Thank you. No <laughs> thank you everyone who's watching. Um, our next session will be on at three o'clock and that's all about the forestry courses available at home, Lacey. Thank you very much. Thank you.